Hello and welcome to the CryEngine Flappy Boyd course. This is a complete beginner's course. So if you've never used CryEngine before and you haven't even set it up, this is the course for you. We're going to start at the very beginning with installing the product. So I'm going to launch a web browser and go to cryengine.com. First thing you're going to need to do is create an account unless you already have one. I happen to have one, so I'm just going to log into it. Once you have that, make sure that you're logged in. The next step is to download the launcher. Launcher is used to keep track of your assets, your projects, your engine versions, etc. as you'll see. Once we've got it here, I'm going to go ahead and click on it to install it. Shouldn't take too long, it's not very big. I'm going to go ahead and launch that from my start menu, which you can't see on this monitor. But here it is. And now we need to go ahead and log in to the launcher with that same account. So there's news here about things that are going on with people using CryEngine and the people that work at Crytek. What I'm interested in here is what's called the library. The library tracks all the assets that I've downloaded from the marketplace, the projects, the games that I've created, the engine versions that I have installed, and also if you have submitted things to sell in the marketplace, you can also track those here. So what I want to do is go to the marketplace, which is going to open in the web browser, and I need to search and install two things. I need to do Game SDK, which is our software development kit, and this is a, a very large collection of assets, code, textures, sounds, all sorts of things. You absolutely do not need this, but I'm going to have you install it because we're going to use a bunch of the assets that it provides. If you explore the sample levels that are provided, you'll get a quick glance at some of the things CryEngine can do, although I'm sure you've probably played some of the games that have been built with it already. The other thing is that when you're first starting out, if you start with a completely blank project and an empty level, you have to create everything. You've got to make your own models, your textures, and one of the advantages of the game SDK is it provides a whole lot of entities for you to play with. You can drop in trees, vegetation, all sorts of things so that you can get up and running and sort of learn the interface without having to worry about inventing everything. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Make sure you install the latest version, not one of the archived versions. You're going to need a fast internet connection to install this. I've already bought it, but you would click on a button here that says add to your cart or something like that. And the other thing that I need to search for is this course. And it looks like this. And this contains the workbook, which you should open up. It's a PDF file, and you can follow along with what I'll be doing in the videos. This video series just recreates what's done in the book. While I'm going to build everything that's built in the book, I'd say a combination of reading the workbook and listening to the videos is going to give you all the information that we have to give you about learning how to build games in CryEngine 5. So go ahead and add this to your cart and download it. Since I've already purchased these, I can see them here in Library, My Assets. So once you go through the checkout process in the marketplace, you're going to see all the things that you've already bought. What I need to do now is simply download them. And the game SDK is quite large. You'll need a fast internet connection. I think it's about 4.1 gigabytes. So that'll take some time to download. I'm going to leap ahead so that you don't have to watch me download it. Now that my game SDK is downloaded, I'm going to download my Flappy Boyd course. This is quite small and it shouldn't take very long. Now that I have both of those things installed, I need to open up the folders where they exist. So I'm going to click on this little arrow here to pop up the menu and say Reveal and Explorer. I'm going to do the same thing for Flappy Boyd. So we need to do a couple of things. You're going to want to copy the contents of this Flappy Assets folder over to Game SDK. The finished game is in the Flappy Assets folder. It's actually in the Levels folder. But you're also going to need all of the rest of this stuff, which are the assets that get created over the course of the game, and some that you're going to need in order to start developing it, uh, a model that we've already built for you. So if you go into Flappy Assets, select all these folders, copy them, Go in your Game SDK 5.5 folder, in your Game SDK, and Game SDK again, a little bit weird, and paste those folders directly into here. Now I want to point out something about the way that the engine works, which tends to be a little confusing for beginners. You see these pack files here. I'm just going to sort by type. These are similar to zip files. They're compressed assets and they've been packaged in order to save disk space. So they're packages of hundreds or thousands of objects that are part of what Game SDK gives you. 
everything from bridges to rocks to trees. There are scripts, textures, videos, all sorts of things in here. What happens is, let's say that you place one of these objects into your game level. A decompressed copy of that gets pulled into an objects folder. And if that folder doesn't exist yet, CryEngine is going to create it automatically. So you'll see that there are a few things that are part of the Flappy game that are the reason this objects folder already exists and the materials folder and the particles folder. Don't worry that these don't exist in the beginning. You don't need to ever create them manually. CryEngine will create them for you automatically. So if we go back to here, the other contents of the actual course asset from the marketplace are the course book. This is an older version, version D. You may be using a later version. A README file which simply reminds you to read the instructions in the first part of the book, which explains what I'm telling you right now about getting set up. And last but not least, actually very importantly, there's a screen captures folder. So we're going to start building some quite complex game logic. Well, not by AAA standards, but by beginner standards. Some pretty intense stuff. So this is an example of a pretty large visual script for the game mechanics, and it's just one of many. So as you can see, there's a lot to this, and we can't read a darn thing. So I've put compressed versions of these into the PDF file, but in order to keep the PDF file itself from getting huge, these are not super high resolution, so they're hard to read. For that reason, I've created really high resolution versions of them and put them in the screen captures folder. So for every screenshot you see in the book, there should be a high resolution version here in the screen captures folder, which you can open up in any image editor, zoom in, and you'll be able to read them quite clearly. You could even print them out if you prefer. That's it for a course. We can go ahead and close this and we can close our game SDK folder. We're done with the web browser for now. So I'm going to close that to free up memory. We go back to our library and then to my projects. We have no projects yet, even though game SDK is in fact a project. By default, it doesn't have any levels associated with it, although you do have one, which is the flappy finished level. So what we need to do for it to recognize that game SDK is a project on here is simply import it. And I'm going to do that by clicking this import button, and then I have to find where I put it. Well, I can save myself some trouble here if instead of trying to guess or search for it, I can go back to the library menu, go back to assets because game SDK is an asset, click on this little menu that we did before and reveal an explorer, and then just reference this path right here. So just kind of keep this on screen so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to go back, move this over a bit so I can read this path import, and then just sort of follow my way along the path. In my case, it's on the D drive under program files, Crytek, game SDK 5.5. And this is the tricky part. You need to point to this first game SDK folder, not the deepest level one, but the one that's contained in game SDK 5.5. Click on OK, and we should have our project set up. At this point, you can go ahead and click on here, which will install the engine. And since I had not yet installed the engine, it automatically installs it so that I can then open this project. So we can confirm that our engine is installed by going back to the library menu and looking at My Engines. And you can see that it says installed here. And that's about the last time we're going to have to worry about that for quite some time. I should point out that you can have multiple versions of the engine installed. If you want to build something in 5.4, you can also choose to install that alongside 5.5. And there is the CryEngine interface for the first time.